Now, in order to explain how this advanced method works, I'm going to be adding contrast to the image without even being able to see the image so that it can fit the image. And here we have the scopes covering the image and I cannot see the image. Now let's reset. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. And today we're going to be discussing adding contrast in a very unique and precise way. Now let's take a look at this problem. So let's take a look at this image here. Now this image uh, was shot in log, but the scene itself has a lot of contrast. So you have a lot of bright areas here and some dark areas here. And the problem is that most beginners will simply come to the contrast controller, increase contrast, and now you run into a weird issue. Due to the high dynamic range of the scene, you're forced to make a tough choice. So when I increased contrast, notice that the sky looks natural, but I lost all information in the dark areas. And if I use the pivot controller to make the uh, dark areas look more natural, I lost most of the information in highlights. This is where we can use a combination of curves and scopes to uh, solve this issue. Just a reminder, we're currently running our Black Friday deal for this year. It includes all of our Resolve courses, uh, of course, lifetime uh, access to all of the courses and lifetime updates. Um, it also includes the uh, full practice footage library, title pack, uh, the LUT pack, um, and it comes with the 30 days money back guarantee. You can check the link in the description. I'll start by opening scopes, so I'll click here, and here I have the RGB Parade scopes. Now, in order to explain how this advanced method works, I'm going to be adding contrast to the image without even being able to see the image. So, I'll start by detaching scopes, and here we have four scopes. I'll click here to make them one, and I'll make sure that the scopes cover the image. Let's change the um, aspect ratio of the scope, so I'll simply go to ratio and make sure it's 16 by 9, so that it can fit the image. And here we have the scopes covering the image, and I cannot see the image. Now let's reset and start adding contrast to the image. Actually, I don't want to even be able to see this preview here, so I'll make it really small and move it to the side. Now, in order to be able to add the correct amount of contrast to the image without even being able to see it, which will teach us a lot about how scopes work and about how curves work. But before we start, there are a couple of concepts that we need to understand first. In curves, I'll make sure that this button is unclicked here, so I only have the Y curve activated. So I'm only controlling luminance. Notice how the R, G, and B curves are disabled. And if you don't know a lot about scopes, just a refresher, this here represents the image. So these are the highlights or the bright areas of the image. And these are the shadows or the dark areas of the image. However, this section here of the scopes represents the entire possible dynamic range. So this line at the top represents the brightest parts that are possible in the image. However, currently the brightest parts in the image are not at this line. So we're losing some dynamic range, which is not a bad thing. This is an artistic choice. However, today we're talking about color correction and adding contrast. So we're going to be treating uh, the highlights as if they must be at the top of the uh, possible dynamic range. And this line at the bottom represents uh, absolute black. And again, the darkest parts in our image are not exactly at the absolute black point of the possible dynamic range that we have. Again, please note that this is not a must. We're discussing color correction here. And of course, in curves, this is the uh, point that represents uh, the brightest parts. This is the point that controls the darkest parts. And the line in the middle controls the rest of the image. Now, note that I'm working with 8-bit footage. So this is the worst case scenario. However, this will teach us something very important about uh, scopes. Notice that if I increase the brightest part of the image and I reduce the lowest part and I overdo it, for example, so let's do this and increase this here. Now, notice these horizontal lines that appear in the image. This is caused by the bit depth of your footage. Not to say that if you're using like 10 or 12 bits, they these lines will not appear, but they tend to appear more with lower bit depth footage. Now, these lines are not good. So what we're trying to do here is to not to make the distance between these lines uh, uh, very high. So it's not an absolute disaster if these lines appear, but we're trying always to keep them slightly closer to each other. Notice that once I control the middle point, 
the lines appear more so the distance between the lines are is, is higher and now if I just move them to the right at least the lines at the bottom here they became much closer so just keep that in mind for now so we have these lines and we're always trying to keep these lines as close to each other as possible the next thing that we need to discuss is this so again I'll increase uh, highlight reduce shadows increase highlights more so for and let's bring this here now I'll add a new point so I have this point and this point here and I'll add a point in the middle and then I'll add another point and notice something very important this point that I just added is close to this point and this point there's a side effect for that notice that every time I increase the brightness in the new point in the middle I get this clump area basically this is a concentration of brightness values where lower brightness values are trying in the image something that should be darker in the image is just trying to increase its brightness above something that should be brighter now to make this simple just know that these lines are something that we try to avoid so notice if i bring this down we have another concentration line here in the middle and if i bring it up keep your eye on this area while i just bring this up and notice how we have a horizontal line appearing Again, this is something that we want to avoid. Let's reset and finally let's increase this more and maybe do this more and notice something very important here that when we added these two points is that we started to get areas in the middle that are empty. So if I increase these two points more, now these are empty areas. Again, we're trying to avoid creating these empty parts in the middle. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to fill the entire possible dynamic range with the dynamic range of the image. In other words, you're trying to get the image representation to fill the entire dynamic range. However, the way this works is that we're not simply trying to fill the dynamic range. We're trying to get a nice gradation in the representation of the image uh, on the scope. So this seems a bit complicated when I say it, but it's actually pretty simple once you see how it works. So let's start with this image. So I'll start by controlling the top of the curve, increasing the brightest point in the image until it almost touches the line. And then I'm going to bring the shadows down. Great. This is where things get interesting. Now, what we're going to be trying to do now is that we have a curve and on the curve we have points. So for example, there's the highlight point and the shadows point. We're going to fill the gap between each every two points with a new point exactly in the middle. And we're going to control this point in a way that makes the curve uh, smooth. So let's take a look. So here we have this point and this point. I'm going to add a point in the middle. And now I'm going to try to increase the brightness. Notice how when I increase the brightness of this point, I'm affecting the scope. However, we're running into the first problem. When I increase the brightness of this point, notice that now we're starting to see these horizontal lines and that is not good. So I'm going to bring the point down until the scope starts to look more natural. I'm going to actually increase a bit more. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tolerate this level of, of uh, seeing these, these lines here. Let's bring this to the left a bit. And now we have this point and this point. I'm going to add a point in the middle and again, up or down to see how this affects the image. So if I bring it up, notice how I'm losing information here. I'm compressing these parts at the top and I don't want to do that so I'm just going to bring the point down until the gradation looks natural again we have this point and this point I'm going to add the point exactly in the middle bring it up or down and notice that now we're starting to run into the problems again so here we have a lot of the uh, horizontal lines keep your eye here when I increase it we're getting the horizontal lines back and if I bring it down we're starting to get some empty areas so the solution is to maybe bring it to this point and again I'm going to be adding points in between each and every point you know notice this point this point is very interesting keep your eye here while i control this point notice how this point is affecting the compression or the gradation of the sky i think this part here represents the sky and if i bring it up i'm compressing the sky and if i bring it down i can see the horizontal lines in the sky so i'm going to move it to a point where the gradation looks more natural now notice the shape of the curve we just created it's, it looks a bit unnatural janky but the point here is that it fits our image perfectly and we just added contrast to the image the right amount of contrast um, without even looking at the image just by using the scopes and understanding how they work with with the y curve actually i'm going to maybe adjust this image a bit more so i'm just going to go through the points making sure that the gradation of the image looks natural so 
and maybe this one here this one here notice the sky we just got some of the blue parts of the sky back and this one up or down and great and now let's take a look at the image and notice the contrast we added let's add saturation and the new node increase saturation further and take a look at the image now in order to understand how important and impressive this is let's take a look at this image and repeat this one more time notice that if i add contrast i automatically lose information in highlights or shadows notice how much compressed this part here so when i added uh, contrast to the car so for example if you add contrast here notice that we lost all information in the sky so i'll add a new version reset bring this here and let's repeat this one more time so i'll bring the highlights up shadows down and i'll just try to increase the midtones getting some of the horizontal lines but just try to make sure that uh, there the spaces between the horizontal lines are not very far and then i'm just going to start adding a new point between every two points now notice this sky here notice that by controlling this point if i bring it up i lose information in the sky i really compress information however if i bring it down i'm retrieving information in the sky and this is the one thing that the regular contrast adjustment or the uh, color wheels adjustment cannot do because they have usually contrast controls uh, two factors so there's the contrast and, and the pivot uh, so it cannot have a curve that adds contrast but protects a certain part of the image like the sky uh, however, uh, and also that's true for um, color wheels. So there's uh, highlights, midtones, and shadows, and you're controlling three points, and you cannot add a new point in the middle that protects a certain part. However, using this method, this point represents highlights, shadows, midtones, and on top of that, we managed to add this point in the middle that retrieved some of the information in highlights in order to make it more natural. And this is something that is extremely unique to curves. So I'll add a new point between these two curves, up or down, yeah. So maybe just increase it a bit between these two points. Notice this, okay. When I increase this point, notice that I got this horizontal line here and we said that that's something that we don't want. So I'll just increase it until the gradation look more natural natural look to the sky this point and this point and notice the interesting shape of the curve now i'll remove scopes increase saturation and take a look at the image i'll just go back to the version before this one this is the original image that we just added contrast to however in this new version let's add an another node and just increase saturation even a bit more note that we achieved what seemed to be impossible so we have the right amount of contrast in these areas here while preserving information in the sky that is thanks to this weird shape of the y curve so this part of the curve lifted information in this part here of the image and this part of the curve protected the sky. Again, let's add a new version, reset, and just try to uh, recreate this look using contrast. And you'll always find yourself struggling between preserving information in highlights or shadows. However, using this method, notice how more natural the image looks. So, so regular contrast and using curves. Contrast curves. Filmsimplified.com